What is up, my friends and fellow busy bees? I hope you're all doing well. Today is going to be a little bit shorter of an episode because, if I'm being honest, I haven't really thought this one through. We are fast approaching the holidays, so, you know, there's all the stuff that goes into that. As I record this on December 20th, today I have begun thinking about and getting Christmas presents, so there's a little bit of insight into me as a person. I know some of you out there are the same, so I don't feel guilty in proclaiming that. But I will say I have been thinking about and stressing about it for like the last two months. So if that makes you feel better, um, anyone who is being proactive in actually pinpointing what they're going to get is yards and yards ahead of me. But anyways, so I've been doing that planning. We're going to be hosting Christmas dinner here at our place on Christmas Day. So getting the menu together for that so I can obviously try and impress my in-laws and rest of the family. But actually what's kept me most busy the last couple of days is an online conference or an online entrepreneur event that I was attending that was hosted by Jan Ditchfield. She also has a podcast called the No BS Business School and it was awesome. I learned so much There was some familiar faces that I've seen in the online space there teaching, and I learned a ton of things. I have so many notes. I'm such a little note taker because for me, if I don't write it down like physically, I'm not really etching that into my brain. I'm like taking in the information, but I need to like actually write it out in order to retain it. And I have to be able to look back at it too and make the effort of going back to look at it if I'm going to remember anything. That's just the kind of brain I have. Probably because if I don't actually write it down, then I'm not actually focused on what someone's saying and I'm probably thinking about like what I'm going to make for dinner. But yeah, it was so awesome. It's also a really great opportunity to step back and force myself to sit down and take that time. It was two days jam-packed with so much information, but I don't often take that much time out of my day-to-day in the business to think about we're talking about goal setting. You already know if you've listened to episode 27 and 28, that goal setting is something I do do very intentionally, but goal setting specifically in my business and looking at what kind of things I need to set up or where my gaps are isn't something that I've historically done. So this was a really great opportunity to step back look at what others are doing and what kind of things they're looking at. And I identified some really great holes, some great holes. (laughs) Oh my God. Anyway, I identified some holes, some things that I can fill. (laughs) Oh my God. My brain's in the gutter, guys. I've got a double espresso in front of me and it's making my brain madness. But I made a list. I identified a bunch of things that I want to get set up. A lot of things got validated for me that I'm doing right or that I'm in the right direction, which is always so nice to hear. Like when I hear these people who are really crushing it in business and they're saying, you know, these are the things that I'm focusing on. This is the stuff I'm trying to learn. And there is a bit of alignment with what I'm trying to do in my business. That's always really validating to me. And I don't see that as a waste of time because, you know, If you're running your own business, especially if you're someone like me who did not come from a business background whatsoever, I didn't grow up, you know, nobody in my family was really an entrepreneur or anything like that. So I didn't grow up seeing these kinds of things around me. So I truly did start from scratch. Like when I say that I knew nothing, I knew nothing. So to hear these things and to have those validations and reinforcements that I'm on the right track, that things take time to build and to get these systems perfect and make them work for me and my business, I always love to hear. So if you needed that reminder or that validation as well, there you have it. But what I wanted to talk about today is something that I've heard quite a few times over the last little bit through some different content that I've put out there, whether it was on the podcast or posts that I was sharing on TikTok or Instagram, because I don't know if this is the most efficient thing to do, but a lot of times the content that I'm putting out across different platforms isn't the same thing. Like some people will do a post on Facebook and then that sends it also to Instagram or vice versa, I guess. And then they'll have like their podcast episode is about that same thing, goes into more detail and then they'll do some YouTube shorts from it and then they'll have a longer version on YouTube. I don't really do that and I probably should start because it would mean that I would be doing a lot less content creation day to day and I do have some systems to streamline things in the new year but I love creating content so it's not something that's really um, stressing me out at this point in time. But all that to say that things that are being put out on those platforms aren't always the same things or you might see something on one platform and then not see it on another for like a month or whatever when I get around to posting it. So I get different feedback 
on different platforms, but I'm seeing some alignment in people's struggles that they're having lately, or maybe just overall, and they're starting to communicate that with me. And so I wanted to do just a quick little episode on it and some of the things that I do to combat that. So if you have seen the title, you already know that we're talking about how you can find the time in your day to flip furniture, which if you have a full-time business doing this, you probably already have some systems that are set in stone that are hopefully working for you, but maybe they're not and you want to, you know, find ways that you can fine tune that or switch some things around or make things a little bit more streamlined. You know, the through line in pretty much everything I say on this podcast is talking about systems and setting up the right systems because I think that it's so important. It is the way that we can save time, save energy. Like I was talking about content creation, I know that I'm expelling more energy and more effort in creating consistent content than I could otherwise be in having this approach that I have been doing. And I'll call it an approach, but it's kind of just like what I ended up doing. I wouldn't say that it was very well thought out, but there's ways that we can be making our lives a lot easier. And if you are finding it hard to find the time to consistently finish projects, to get yourself out to the workshop. I know a ton of you have very busy lives. You have little ones running around. You have furry friends that you're taking care of, whether that is your husband's or your pets. You have work. You have extracurriculars that you're trying to get the kids to. You have your own hobbies and interests and social life that you're trying to have some semblance of. So things get busy. Things get busy for me too. But I want to give you some ways to kind of rethink furniture flipping if you have been seeing it as more of a burden than a benefit to you. If you've had it as an item to do on the list and not necessarily something that you're looking forward to be doing because it's supposed to be fun and it's supposed to be enjoyable, I think at least, personally. I came into this work because it was something that I loved to do and I do think that you can love your job if you find the right job that you love. So here's some of the things that I wanted to talk about. First up is the thing that I always come back to is the number one reason why I love doing furniture makeovers is because it's such a systematized process. You know, you're moving from one stage to the next, to the next, to the next. You can't go in and paint a piece and then decide to clean it and then prime it and then scuff sand it, you know, there's a very logical flow to the work that you do. And once you get in the habit of doing a few of these things, you don't even have to think about what comes next. And for my kind of brain being very kind of type A, but also a little bit chaotic up here in the brain, I find it really great because I don't have to think about it too much. I know what's coming next. I know now that I've been doing it so long, how long each step is going to take so I can allocate that in my brain or in my calendar for that amount of time. And it just works out really well for me. And especially when I was still working my nine to five job and at the, like, I'd say the year prior to me going full-time in this business. There was a lot going on in that time and I still wanted to, actually, I was also getting married around that time and it was a COVID wedding. Uh, So there was just a lot of moving parts that were changing day to day as they announced different restrictions and nod and you can have people or you can't or whatever. So it was a busy time in my life, but I still wanted to be working on furniture consistently. A, to bring in money. B, because it was kind of like my time in my day when I could like just relax and not think about all the other chaotic things in my life. Get into that state of flow and like put on a podcast and just like vibe out with my furniture, you know? So that's what I did, but I had to find little pockets of time in order to do that. So I wouldn't always have like a four hour stint when I could be out in the garage uninterrupted working on things. Sometimes I was running out in between meeting or on my lunch break or on the weekends after or before we were running over to hang out with friends or whatever. I was having to find those little pockets of time and find different ways to fit that in. And because I had a bit of a flow and a bit of a process going, I was able to do that but you have to get a little bit creative with it and you have to kind of have it top of mind is the biggest thing because if not then it's really easy especially if your workshop is not like in your living room that you're walking through every day like I work in my garage we do not keep anything other than my work stuff in the garage so if I was like super distracted or we had a really busy week I could easily not step foot in that garage if I wasn't telling myself to or if I didn't have a reason to. Other than putting the recycling out, I do keep the garbage out there. 
So you do have to keep it really top of mind and be intentional in that way. But no matter what you do for your process in your project, anything you're doing is moving that project forward just a little bit which is great because you can see that immediate result. You can see that you've moved yourself to the next step in the process. You get that immediate gratification. And for me, at least, that keeps me wanting to move forward because I'm that much closer to seeing the end product, seeing it looking great, seeing the before and after and that drastic difference and getting it into somebody else's home, having them experience it, getting the money that comes from that. I'm not going to say that isn't a big motivator. I am very money motivated. Even if I'm only having 10 minutes of time to work on something, those are the things that are still going to get me out into the garage, finding that time in my day to move that project forward. So find those pockets of time in your day. If you're finding it difficult to really get things completed or get things completed in a timely manner, because maybe you do consistently finish your projects, but they just take a month each or two months each or whatever, whatever your definition of taking too long is. And you want to speed that up and you want to have a bit more movement in the pieces that you're working on and getting them out and sold and that kind of thing. So find those pockets of time in your day, whatever your schedule is, whatever your situation is, and have your space set up so that you're ready to rock when you can get that time. So if you know that you have a little one that goes down for a nap, but sometimes they nap for an hour, but sometimes they only nap for 20 minutes and you never really know which kind of a day it's going to be, but you could probably feel it out, can't you? You know by now, a mother knows. But if you know you may only have 20 minutes, I don't want you to spend 15 minutes when you first go out into the garage trying to find the can opener or trying to find a paintbrush or trying to find the sandpaper grit that you need. Make sure that your space is set up in a way that at least, even if it's organized chaos, I need you to know where everything is and I need there to be space for you to work on what you need to work on. So keep that in mind as you are finishing up anytime that you're working out there too so that you can look around, take two seconds, Is it in a space, is it in a state where I can come in the next time I get the chance to and I can just pick up where I started? You know, make sure that you're cleaning your brushes and doing whatever you need to do to maintain your tools and that kind of way. But ultimately, a tidy space makes for a tidy mind, as they say. So I do recommend trying to keep it clean and organized. But if you're not that kind of a person and that doesn't come naturally to you, at least make sure that you know where everything is and you're taking that split second when you're leaving to look around and make sure that everything is good to go for the next time. Because that will save you so much time in and of itself. And also, that will remove any friction of you going out there if you know like beyond that door is just chaos and I know I'm going to spend forever looking for this or that and that's going to piss me off and then I'm going to be in a shitty mood and I'm not going to want to work. You're the only one that can change that and make it a more positive experience for yourself unless you hire someone to clean it up for you but take control and be forward thinking in that way and that could make all the difference for you. I also recommend batching your projects if you have the space and are able to. So listen, I got pretty crafty with the amount of space that I have. I have a one car garage that, like I said, has the garbage recycling in there. But I don't have a ton of space in the garage, but I make do with what I have. I have a big Calyx unit from Ikea that holds a bunch of supplies that I'm probably actually going to get rid of soon because I don't think it's the most efficient use of the space, but it was here when we moved into the house. And then I have a bunch of my inventory in there. I don't have any external storage solutions or a storage locker or anything where I house pieces that I'm going to be working on soon. So anything business related other than my paint and stains and those kinds of supplies that would freeze out there is in that garage. So I am working with limited space, but I at any given time am working on at least three different pieces, I would say. And sometimes I batch them in the stages that I'm working on them, which is my recommendation here, but sometimes I don't. And either way, I know that I have three pieces that I'm moving forward at any given time. And so that's helpful for me. But I think what the most efficient thing to do is to batch the things that you do at the same time. So what I mean by that is say you choose whatever day, Monday is cleaning day. So you have a dresser, a side table, and a little coffee bar. So on Monday, you're going to go through and take all the hardware off of all of them. You're going to clean all of them thoroughly, let them dry. You're going to get all the cobwebs and everything out of them. Maybe you're going to pull all the drawers out and get everything prepped and ready to go. And maybe that's all you have time for that day. But that 
But now you have three pieces that are clean, prepped, ready to rock. And when you come back that next day, maybe Tuesday, you can then scuff sand all of them or do all the sanding on all three of those projects and then wipe all of the dust away. And then they're clean and ready to go on Wednesday when you come in and you prime everything if you're going to be painting it. And then by the time you're done priming that third piece, it's probably been about an hour and you can go back, read the directions on whatever product you're using. You can probably go back by that time and put a second coat of primer on that first piece that you had just primed and then work your way through and now everything has two coats of primer and then you let it dry overnight and then you come back on Thursday and guess what? It's time to paint and you get all three pieces painted. Same thing. Maybe you can go through and do your second, maybe third coats of paint and then you come back on, what day was that? On Friday and you top coat everything and then maybe you put another coat of top coat on everything and maybe that's all it needs and by Friday evening you're putting all the drawers back in, putting the hardware on and Saturday Saturday, you're ready to stage and you have three pieces that are complete. They could be very different looking. They might be different colors if they're all painted. They might have different designs. I fully recognize that some pieces require more attention and time if there's large repairs that are happening and that kind of thing. But if you could work out a system like that where you're working on a few pieces at once, immediately that is going to increase the amount of pieces that you're listing, hopefully the amount of pieces that you're selling at a time, and probably increase your efficiency because you're not like coming in and out of the workshop during the day to add a coat on this thing and you spend 20 minutes and then you're washing your paintbrushes out and you're doing this and that and it's a lot of the setting up and taking down but not actually spending as much time doing the work that needs to be done because it's just like one small piece. So think about how you can batch create that work. I talk about batch creating content all the time and it's the same idea, but there's just a larger output that is ultimately going to result in direct income for you. So that's a way that you can do that. And some people like to really focus in on the piece that they're working on and that is totally fine if that's working for you and that's the pace with which you're able to put pieces out. Maybe the pieces that you work on are so intricate or um, if you're hand painting, you know, designs and instead of using transfers, you're doing detailed painting work. I totally get that that takes way more time to do. And so maybe you can only do a piece a week or a piece of bi-weekly, a month, whatever. That's all good. But this is recommendations for people who are feeling like they just can't get ahead and they're always just running around all the time, but they aren't completing pieces or they just aren't finding the time to get out there to the workshop. I hope that will help you. And then I also want to talk about mindset because a lot of the things we talk about here do come back to that and your outlook on the work that you're doing or if you don't want to call it work that that could be a good first mindset shift to make don't think of it as like a burden this is my job so it is work in the grand scheme of things but I feel so lucky to go out every day and to work on furniture and to be able to call that my job that there is no like strain or resistance or anything like that in my brain or in my mind that surrounds that concept. I'm always fired up. I love being out there. I love doing what I love to do. And and if you're doing this, I'm assuming that it's something that you enjoy doing too. Maybe it's just a survival thing and you're doing it to flip pieces and sell them and make money and that's it. You just know that it's a good way to make money. That's totally cool. But you'll probably enjoy it a lot more if you do some mindset work and change it to something that you kind of enjoy doing. I don't know. I just personally don't enjoy doing things that I don't enjoy doing. So I like to kind of rethink how can we make this something fun and more enjoyable and stack different habits together and that kind of thing. So think about the thing that's holding you back from doing the work, from being consistent with the work and find ways to avoid it by implementing different strategies. So if it's the concept of being out of sight and out of mind, like I'm not going by the workshop so I can just get so distracted my day with cleaning and doing all the running around and cooking and this and that, that I don't even think about it until I'm laying in bed and I'm like, oh shit, I should have worked on my furniture today. Then book it into your calendar or put a sticky note somewhere where you would normally go if you have free time. If you tend to veg out on the couch when you have time to go and sit down and you just scroll on TikTok for three hours straight. I have no idea where I could be getting that example from. It's not like I can see where I sit in my couch because it's so well worn, but (laughs) then why don't you put a sticky note somewhere that's within your line of sight where you go when you normally are wasting time. It's not relaxing. It's wasting time if we're just aimlessly scrolling for hours on end. I'm sorry to break it to you. But put something there, a reminder, something that's going to trigger your brain and say, oh, and jump up. I should do something in the garage or do the next step or whatever it might be. 
Like I said, if you have kids and that's the barrier, find ways to get out there during nap time, or maybe it's a matter of having to communicate with the person that you live with, who's helping take care of the kids with you, your partner, whatever your setup is, that you need to carve out some time to be able to work on these projects. You're not currently able to find the time, and in your partnership, you want to make that apparent to them and find ways that together you can, as a team, encourage you to pursue this hobby or this business and make it and make yourself more effective in doing so. So maybe the kids make dinner with dad on Thursdays and those 45 minutes are when mom gets to go and have her time in the garage. That could be a fun way for dad to be having time with the kids while you're able to push the project forward for yourself and prioritize yourself and your business and and or hobby, whatever this is for you. If it's a matter of you not feeling motivated to go out there and you're just like, oh, do I have to? <laughs> Find ways to incentivize you getting into the workshop. So maybe you can only listen to your favorite podcast while you're out there. Favorite podcast? Oh my God, I wonder what that could be. Just kidding. (laughs) Or maybe the workshop is the only place that you get to enjoy an afternoon coffee. So you can have your first one earlier in the day, but if you're going to have a second, it's going to only be out in the garage while you're working on your pieces. I don't know. Whatever is an incentive for you, different people are incentivized in different ways, but find what it is that works for you that gets your butt out there and you're like, okay, I'm here. Let's go. And if you have a business and you call it a furniture refinishing business, but you find that you're too busy day to day with all the other things that go into running the business to actually work on the furniture, sounds funny, but it happens to more people than you would think. I've talked to a lot of them. Then you just need better systems. It's as easy as that. And that sounds so big and broad, but it doesn't take a lot to really create those systems, get them set up. It does take a little bit of time at the forefront, But believe me when I tell you, it will save you so much time in the long run. You're going to kick yourself for not doing it sooner. And if you're someone that has had the thought that you might actually want to try having a business selling your furniture makeovers, you're definitely in the right place. I mentioned I came from nothing related to business. I came from social work and victimology in my previous life. So I had no idea what I was doing when I decided to start a business doing furniture painting. So if that's you and you're like, yes, 100%, I have no idea where to start. Do not worry. I gotcha. I have a free guide and checklist for starting your own furniture painting and refinishing business. So you can get started today and follow a step-by-step roadmap so you don't miss anything important in setting up your business. This includes the systems that we were just talking about. I also recommend this for anyone who found themselves unexpectedly running a business, selling their refinished furniture, because that usually is how we kind of end up here. You do a couple pieces for your own home and then friends see it and they're like, ooh, can you do some for me? And you're like, yeah, yeah, for sure. And then eventually they're like, you got to sell these. And you're like, okay, I guess I'll sell them. And then woo you're a business owner. Surprise! So if that's you, I also think that you'll really benefit from this guide and checklist just to make sure that you've ticked all the boxes and you aren't missing anything important to implement and to start getting systems created and working for you. So I'll put it in the show notes of today's episode if you want to grab that guide and checklist or you can go to my website which is meldidherself.ca and download that because I want to get you started on the right foot. I'm here to help and I just often see people not treating their furniture painting and refinishing business like a business and because I took all this time to research and make sure that I was doing things the right way, I want to share that knowledge with you now. It's the reason why I created the guide. It's the reason why I show up here and I talk about business on the podcast. I could just talk about painting and refinishing, period, hard stop, and there'd be plenty of people that were interested in that too. I don't always get as many people listening to the episodes on the business and the systems and that kind of stuff, but I think it's so valuable and so important, and I think that it's something that not a lot of people in our area are talking about. So I just want that to be available to you. And that's why I offer the coaching and consulting as well, because it's just so much easier to have someone who's been there, who's set these things up, walk you through it, help you through. I know for me, I just, I wish that that was available to me when I first started out. It would have saved me so much time and effort. But anyway, so I'll add that into the show notes if you are interested. But my last recommendation for finding the time to flip your furniture pieces, if you're finding it hard to carve out that time or to get as many pieces done as you see people around you, people online, all these videos that you see people throwing up day after day on Instagram or TikTok or YouTube, and you're like, God damn. 
I like I need to set my game up. I need to get more done and put more pieces out. And how am I going to be able to do that? Maybe you want to do that. But also a really good recommendation is stop comparing yourself to others, period. Hard stop. Comparison is the thief of joy, my friend. Don't compare yourself to others because you don't even know. The thing with social media is, please hold while I take a sip of my espresso. The thing with social media is you don't even know if what you're seeing is the reality. And I hope you know that by now. But you might see somebody posting four reels a week and they are in-depth tutorials about furniture makeovers they have done. And you're like, wow, they completed that nine drawer long boy dresser and a different tall boy dresser and a hutch and a set of nightstands this week, all with very different methods and approaches and designs and styles. Like, how are they getting this all accomplished? Reality check, they probably are not getting that all accomplished in that week. A lot of people batch their content and then schedule it out so that it's not, you know, four different videos of the same process day after day after day. So you might not have seen them post a previous reel two months ago about the same dresser that they edited in a different way, but this could have been a flip that they did like back in the summer. So stop comparing yourself to others. I can't emphasize that more. Goes into the mindset piece, but you will never ever feel better about yourself if you're comparing yourself to others. And if you do, well, you're probably comparing yourself to people doing less than you. And I just don't think that's a productive way to go about life. If you're someone that leaves that comparison, it's just going to leave you feeling shitty. If you see someone putting out those four reels and you're like, wow, they did that all in this amount of days. That's awesome. I'm going to like strive to do better sure okay I'll allow it I'll allow it but if you're someone that looks at that and you're like oh my god I need to do better look at what they're doing oh I can only put out one piece a week or one piece a month or whatever and you're like all woe is me about it stop it quit it you're doing this to yourself this is tough love this is what I do best but you don't need to put that on yourself and you are putting that on yourself You're choosing to have that mindset about it and you don't need to. It's just going to leave you feeling shitty about yourself. So focus on you and ways that you can beat your previous self or else it's just going to kill any potential for motivation that you had. Because if you look at someone and you're like, oh, they're doing that. I could never do that. That's not going to make you motivated to do better and to beat what you did last week or beat what you did last year. Only compare yourself to yourself. Look to others for motivation and for recommendations or looking at them to see how do they do this I wonder if I could implement that in my business and that kind of stuff sure that's productive that is market research that is self-development but guys if you're looking at other people and it's just making you feel bad there's like movie magic behind it or whatever the equivalent is to content creation so I want to break that facade that you might be looking at and comparing yourself to but I also just want to recommend don't compare yourself if it's not something that's productive to you just don't do it And something that you may not know about me, I love little motivational messages. They literally always get me fired up. And I keep a running list of ones that are especially catchy or speak to me in the notes app on my phone. So I end every podcast episode, if you didn't already know, with one of those that I've noted down over the years, because I want you to leave our time here each week feeling inspired, motivated, and ready to take on whatever comes your way this week. So this week's Mel's motivational message came from Derek Sivers. He has a book that is on my to-read list for early 2023, and the quote is, call the destination and ask for directions. So I think that's really important when we are looking at the systems that we are setting up in our businesses, the ways that we can achieve the goals that we are setting. You want to look at the end goal, the end product, where you want to be personally or in your business or whatever the case may be, and look at what those people are doing. Ask those people what they are doing. Research things that people have done and then work backwards from there and find ways that you can implement those things. Sometimes you'll do it and it will be like when you go to take a big gulp of like Gatorade or some other like wide mouthed beverage and you know you just like throw it back and then it just spills all over you because you can't like fit your mouth over it or some other metaphor that makes more sense and it might just be like information overload or overwhelming because you're like okay this is all the stuff they say to do but I'm like nowhere near that and I have 52 things that I want to get done and I don't even know where to start that can happen but just take a breath Dial it back, write it all down, and then just one by one, work your way through. Find people that can help you to do those things. Find resources, read books, watch videos, listen to podcasts, 
Sometimes you need to put some money into it and hire people to help you do those things. But look at the destination. If that's a destination you really want to get to, a lot of things, a lot of success, a lot of positive results end up being very systematized ways of getting there. Sometimes a little bit of luck helps too, but truly it's like persistence and following the right steps. So look at the destination, give it a call and say, how am I getting there? Because that's the way that's going to help you. Whatever your goal is, even if it's not in business, if you're, you know what, I want to lose 20 pounds in 2023. Okay, so let's maybe look to someone else that has lost 20 pounds that is a similar body composition to you or that has a similar story to you or similar habits. Like you can do the trial and error approach Absolutely. And sometimes that yields really great results because everyone's journey and everyone's approach to things is different and we're in different areas or we have different businesses. So it's hard to just cookie cutter, say, do what that person did and you'll get the same results. That usually doesn't happen, but a lot of the common denominators do have a through line across a lot of people who have achieved great success. So think about that. And When you figure out what your destinations are in life in 2023 for your business, for your family, for yourself and your development, call the destination and ask them for directions. I can almost guarantee it will bring you some success. All right, that's it for now. I appreciate your time. I wish you all a very happy holiday season. I will see you here next week because we don't take breaks here, okay? Busy be refinishing. We're not offline for the holidays. I will see you next week for a recap on 2023 because we just got to take a look at what happened, honestly. It was, a, it was a crazy year. It was a big year and I want to do a recap on it. So I'll catch you guys next week and I'll see you then.